Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I just uh, welcome everybody uh, to the Zoom, both in the room and uh, online. Uh, so we are delighted to welcome you here to this uh, to Valentina Marvin, Elise, 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 who is an assistant professor at uh, the University of Zubria uh, in uh, Como. Uh, she has a PhD in economic and political geography. Um, and uh, is a past research fellow at uh, the Universities of Parma and uh, Pisa, uh, and was an assistant professor at the University of Bologna, and uh, is presently a visitor uh, here in, to the University of Social Sciences Institute, and is also uh, to the Technological University of Dublin, and she's been back in October uh, to do some more uh, work with, uh, with the people at TUD uh, there. Uh, she's quite active on a kind of disciplinary front, so she's a member of the Committee of the Italian Geography uh, Teachers Association, and she's also currently a member of uh, the Committee of the Italian Geographical uh, Society. Um, uh, she's currently doing some work on, um, as a PI in representation of colonial landscapes in Irish tourist attractions, which is the work she's doing with TUT, um, and a, P, a PI on a project on environmental crisis uh, climate change uh, on a kind of observatory for social mobilisation uh, and new forms of digital activism, and that's what she's going to be uh, talking to us uh, today about, which is around digital activism in more than cyber place reflections on youth uh, social uh, movements. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing the talk. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, everyone, for coming and literally coming. Um, for some time now, I have been looking at narratives and territories, specifically wondering how narratives shape places. I'm following a double aim. From one hand, I'd like to set a seed for the reasoning behind the territorial discussion, which is enriched by web narration. And on the other hand, I would like to offer a glimpse of the new communication practices on the line. In some cases, becoming, uh, becoming digital activism. I find it particularly interesting to study how territory is shaped by the discourses of climate change activists, because in this particular case, geography is present on two levels. It is present as the mechanism of the discourses, uh, that is, planetar, the environment, the natural resources, etc. And is present because social movements express themselves in places. And with regard to this, we have three other sub levels. The first is about where social movements express themselves in digital places and physical places. The synthesis of both is called cyber places by Nick Wellman. And the second sub level is where the engagement takes place, that is mainly in subspace. And the third sub-level concerns the event dissemination and protest, or more generally, uh, the event sharing, uh, uh, again, mainly in some spaces. From now on, I will often use the category of more than cyber plates. I recently imagined this in the conceptual category in a new chapter. I called more than cyber plates the dimension of territorial identities which promotes democracy through contemporary digital activism, observing how people take part in local and in global collective actions. Modern cyber places emphasize material interconnections between places and subspaces, and more importantly, it takes from the modern real theory the idea of putting on the same level material and immaterial of digital and Digital geographies in a contemporary, interconnected, and non monistic sense. There is thus a very strong intertwining of geography and discourses that leads me to ask how do the discourses of social movements shape places and more than seven places? This is the research question I started from. And I used two different methods to investigate it visual methodologies by Gineros and Central Analysis. Based upon the reflections of Jessop, McLeod and Jones, Lechner, Nichols, Kitchen, 
contemporary speciality emerges from several different and complex specialities, also taking into account aspects such as scale, place, territory, and network. These factors can no longer be ascribed exclusively to a single concept or category, they should be considered as a whole. It's certainly true that a narrative speaks about a specific place which produces new spatial forms, its perception and image. Firstly, Frederick Jameson and later Janet Murray in 1997 identified the four distinct properties found in new media. Use of participation, navigable space, computational procedures, and cyclopedic capacity. According to Leach, the image of the territory is the result of a reciprocal process between the observer and the landscape. The interaction which takes place between human and territory acts as a filter, a filter between what a person actually sees and the perception of what he sees. Narrators in the roles of photographers, filmmakers, or bloggers more or less consciously contribute to the imaginary building of the territory. With their work, they provide an understanding and generate a common sentiment towards which is not necessarily real, but the territory can become a reality. The story is a kind of narration which is a privileged medium which tells of a valuable bond both culturally and historically between human and places. This narrative structure of reality, therefore, represents the main motivation and the success of both storytelling and national storytelling and narrations in general. With these assumptions, I show two case studies. The first is about the global climate strike in Italy, which took place in 2019, and the second is about the TAP, an important work financed by the European Investment Bank for the transportation of natural gas from the Caspian Sea to the whole of Europe. The landing point in Italy is in an area known as Salento, where I live, found on the south coast. Let's start from the global climate strike in Italy. The choice of the strike of 2019, preceding the more recent strikes, is due to the fact that for a more precise semantic analysis, I wanted to avoid the intersection, uh, in, uh, to intersect in too many linguistic data related with the pandemic uh, that inevitably characterized the most recent strikes. On 27 September, 2019, at least 150 um, nations joined the third global climate strike that followed the wave of the movement inspired by the Great Commander. In a single day, more than 2 million strikers joined the more than 4 million of the previous Friday, and thus, uh, Climate Action Week was confirmed as the largest environmental demonstration ever organized. The mobilization brought together about 7.6 million people. In this scenario, Italy recorded the highest participation rates with over 1 million demonstrators. Students of all ages, workers and retires, adolescents and the elder participated with a social composition as varied as it was vast. 160 Italian squares in 150 Italian cities were involved to ask for political action to save the planet. From a methodological point of view, as anticipated, I use in both case uh, studies a mixed method, uh, methods approach, relies on two different projects, visual methods and sentiment analysis, with the aim of investigating the relationships between digital activism, public space, territorial identities and territorial narratives, one of the two methodologies proposed is sentiment analysis on the web channels that are most used by activists with different gradients of activism for climate change. 
In particular, by carrying out a web search using the keywords global climate strike Italy, 30 sources were found and managed, selected from a number of about 200 sources in total. Those choices are the ones about which the topic has been most debated. The sources were selected by doing both a free search by keywords global and climate and strike and ETD on the online search engine and by searching directly the generalist social networks, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. The reason for choosing this type of sources lies in the need to listen to what is the dominant sentiment on the net about my research topic because the more a topic is dominant on the net, the more it will be able to act on perceptions and then uh, the more your practices and then uh, people's mindset with respect to the territory in a spiral that starts from the web and takes shape in action. This type of choice derives from taking into account the effects that the inbound electronic word of mouth phenomenon causes on human perceptions and actions. So this is why monitoring this discussion space is extremely important. Therefore, after the survey of the sources carried out on uh, the basis of the previous considerations, the app to check software was used to process the selected semantic data. The time range selected was from uh, the 1st January of uh, 2019 to the 31 of December of 2019. To understand how the web talked about the global climate strike in Italy during the year in which Italy was the nation with the highest number of people involved in the demonstrations compared to the rest of the world. Finally, the tab cloud processed by app to check software in this figure provides a double indication. On the one hand, it detects the words that are more recurrent and are displayed as bigger the more they are recovering. On the other hand, it uses information based on color using red, yellow and green, um, indicating respectively a negative, neutral or positive sentiment. The more intense the color, the more intensely the sentiment will be expressed. This first image is full of information and can be read like a photograph but also as a hyperlink. In fact, when software formulates this synthetic visualization, it is possible to query every single word and find out all the comments where it was detected to better understand the sense of the sentiment it expresses. Therefore, for example, the word climate, which is obviously the most cited, is colored yellow and expresses a neutral sentiment because, in reality, the comments in which it is present express very polarized judgments. They are extremely negative when dealing with the problem of climate change and very positive when instead they deal with the need to work to improve climate policies the need of broadness, the importance of global cohesion on this issue. This ensures that the average sentiment value that is expressed each time this word is mentioned is neutral. However, it is evident that this is a non significant media value. By analyzing the words and phrases that contain uh, climate and global, we understand how sentiment provides little information. Let us uh, take the case of global, which is colored yellow like climate. The neutrality related to this word, once again, depends on the fact that either it is spoken or in totally negative terms, global responsibility, global capitalism and the like, or in totally positive terms, global climate strike mainly. It is therefore a neutrality that expresses little as it happens for many other words in the back cloud. Rather, we are more interested in the words themselves. There are two main, main themes around which the subjects and topic we are analyzing revolve, and they are grouped around the theme of education 
and the social health team. As for the team of education, in fact, the following emerge teach, schools, education, indoctrination, teach, teaching, class, scientists, brainwashing. In relation to the social youth team, the following emerge children, people, kids, young, data. The opportunities for social and political expression offered by modern set of places favor an expansion of participation in those structured, at least apparently so, web networks that manage to reach even those young people who would quote thousand and hand are sophisticated independents and engaged skeptics. This, the dispersion is also evident from the variety of comments relating to the deployment, as can be seen from this figure. The online conversations relating to the strike of 2019 were concentrated shortly before and shortly after, and then completely ran out. To understand how the discourses and the typically youthful social content are intertwined, with the territory, I associate visual analysis with previous sentence analysis. I try to read the meaning of the images that appear from the same web search used for the analysis of the discourses. I insert the keyword global climate strike into the most common search engine, Google, and try to investigate how the production, circulation, and audience to site grows of the most recurrent images affect territorial identities. With the most recurrent image, which also reflect how the event took place from the north to the south of Italy, I have built a unique college. Let's see this slide. The reference to the images is used to illustrate the analysis of the phenomenon in the urban space on the assumption that the images presented in this figure have been heavily used to communicate the strike online and create engagement for the next strike. Social movements communicate online by drawing on the shared visual knowledge of society in which they are grouped in, and the images we see here have also served these goals. They were used to create new engagement by reinterpreting a pre existing mindset to which form a collective participant. These images, therefore, with their expressive power, have represented an important means of mobilization. This is understandable if we try to trace the symbolic process through which the mindset of dissent is built. It is generated starting from the presence of influential visual symbols. Visual symbols are necessary for demonstrators to generate or reinforce the sharing of ideas and belonging to the collective subject. So, with the awareness that social movements use a narrative that is also composed of symbols capable of consolidating them and guaranteeing their continuity, we observe the recurring design elements and colors used in trans strikes. The prevailing visual markers are green and blue, and images such as the art. In this sense, visual materials are repositories of shared activist identities and cultures capable of connecting different generations of protesters and different waves of intention. Moving on to the semiotic level of these images, the slogans are often written in English as well as in Italian. This is not strange because English is used as a global language in protests and a symbol of traditional discursive rhetoric. Thus, while English involves the largest possible audience, the symbols that are part of the visual and the rhetorical set, or claims, appeal to a specific audience, specifically your audience. The union of symbols and language develop shared cultural values at a precise historical moment. Furthermore, the choice of using the Italian language also means that the object of the protest in itself required also becomes a local issue. Thus, the use of the language in Italian, physical proximity between activists, 
sharing of a space together with the sharing of an idea feeds the sense of territorial belonging, albeit ephemeral and ascribed to the moment of the protest itself and to its consequences. This is possible because individuals operate their own ordering for, for space by proceeding along gradually diminishing degrees through a decrease in density. They move from the large scale, in this case very large, which is the web, and through the recognition of the ecological cause as inhabitants of the same world, large scale, they need ever smaller scales to determine territories and that they interpret as belonging to. Narratives are useful for recovering or redefining urban identities and working at bodily and discursive practice at the same time is useful for the same purpose. It is also through the action of working that people operate an early form of sense of place. Establishing vital, emotional, experiential, physically um, relationships with it that constitute a form of learning about the territory and by working physically and psychologically living the space. Therefore, working through a specific space, sharing a common cause, speaking the same language, summarized in the same signs, exactly as in the case of protests, is a way of activating memorial practices that produce more or less temporary territorial identities. These atypical identities are modeled on experienced, practiced, shared, observed realities. And the narrative on social media of these experiences is in turn able to establish that dependence between geographical reality and human reality, such that perception of the same places through digital images is absorbed with the same value as a declaration of reality. And this is why we couldn't talk about more than seven places. About the second case study, again I use sentiment analysis and visual methodologies. The TAP is an important work financed by the European Investment Bank for the transportation of natural gas from the Caspian Sea to the whole of Europe. The landing point in Italy is in an area known as Salento, uh, found on the southeast coast, and the pipeline crosses through Azerbaijan, Turkey, Greece, Albania, and Italy, as you can see in the slide. Um, just to, <laughs> this study does not delve into the economic side of the project. The need for the TAP was due to the following greater demand for natural gas in Europe, but both now and in the future, compensate for the falling of internal production to relax the growth and diversify supply. This is a very important point. Many Southeastern European countries have only one gas supply, which makes them extremely vulnerable, especially in this period, uh, when, um, especially when the supply is interrupted or when prices are not competitive. For example, Albania does not even have its own gas network and therefore relies on coal and petrol to satisfy the their needs. Alongside the current gas line, which connected European, Russian, African, and remote sea markets, the new Caspian Sea pipeline, we reduce the need for only one supplier. The TAP meets the strategic European aims of diversification of supply and their safety. Consequently, the European Commission and the United States supported the project. The landing point of the TAP is in Italy in one of the most beautiful coastal towns of Salento, which is called San Foca, and the underwater pipeline is about 25 kilometers long, while the underwater Round five is around eight kilometers. Reasons for disapproval are 
an ancestor project. The gas pipeline already found in Italy used only 60% of their potential. Therefore, there was no need for a new pipeline. In addition, and this is strongly important now in this historic period, it will not allow a dissociation from Russia, as they are part of the project. They are partner. The TAP damages health and environment, the necessity of moving and replanting uh, centuries old olive trees, even to damage to marine life and tourism. More importantly, the TAP and its harmful conditions will add to the already high number of lung cancer incidences registered in the area, which is one of the highest in the world. Economic damage, the area will change from an area of great natural beauty, as you saw before, to an industrial one, which in turn will ruin the tourist industry and also real estate. Corruption, during the approval of the TAP, some members of the European Parliament were open to corruption during a vote of the European Council regarding 85 political prisoners in Azerbaijan, and the project's approval was given without statesman vote. Uh, visual methodologies are useful for obtaining information through images available in the media of this research. Possible to understand cultural, social, and ideological aspects of the community. Here I'd like to propose a photo of same modality, a sequence of images with text which communicate message, information, knowledge defined by the researcher. In order to produce a photo say, it is necessary to have clear guidelines regarding the retelling of the story for the message to be communicated. It is a technique and an accepted narrative method. An explanation may be present and its position regarding the image may vary. An introductory text may be followed by images without comments or else images may be alternated between text or images have a dominant road, a role followed by the text. This method uh, is used when it is deemed Accessory to capture the attention of the audience. This is why I choose to um, analyze some murals. All of these murals are located along the coastal roads where the pipeline run and now run. Above all, the coastal areas which was submitted to the greatest damage produced by the TAP. Images which encouraged non surrendering to fight for nature. The content of these murals were predominantly political in favor of democracy, participation, and environment. Here, subjects were often injured, monstrous or bleeding, pointed in bright colors. These represent illness and the other duties. Then, sentiment analysis methodology, I used AppCheck, a software for semantic analysis, also here able to understand five languages at the same time and all social networks needed for research. Research was focused on the main social networks which have talked about TAP, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. The keywords uh, I used was TAP. I find 13 virtual conversational areas, including in, the, in three social networks. The keyword DAP has been chosen in order to remain as generic as possible and in order to collect as many comments as possible. The comments managed were 6704. The most discussed topics were the network, no child. Network, uh, yes, you see right there, this is for network in Italian. Notav and Notav. Notav is another controversial project of discussion in Italy. Taranto. Taranto is the place with the highest recorded occurrences of lung cancer in Europe, located close to the gas pipeline landing point of Taranto in Italy. 
uh, than Puglia and Citizen. The sentiment average was 2.8 out of 5, and it is not very really low anyway, it shows a negative sentiment because the comments were balanced due to the beauty of the coastal and of the landscapes. We also could have the insights, some insights from the correlation between the 15 most recurring topics. Here you can see which are the most recurring topics. And the connection between the word and that. Take note that the most correlated words are Taranto again and Ilva. Ilva is a large but controversial steel works built in the 70s with a very high polluting impact. So, evidently, the most important reason for testing was linked to the health. Beyond what politics, association, and digital activism say, in fact, emerge a strong political link between the words of that, of that and the trip, which were other important projects much talked about in Italy. Aspects which were linked to the environment, corruption and economic damage emerged in Florissa seem to be instrumental in disseminating political ideologies as it expresses the grassroots of the people through spontaneous communication and all concentrated on health issues. Funded on or not, this was the real worry of the people. For reasons already mentioned, the word no doubt is found in sentences with a neutral to low sentiment average. The parts of the sentences with a positive sentiment are those which talk about the people's land that will be damaged by the pipeline. Correlation connected to the topic network, which is great in Italy, uh, in Italian, are linked to political parties and activist movement. For this reason, the discussions are more heated and the sentiment average is lower than the previous one. The analysis could continue focused on the topics highlighted to be amongst the most frequent ones. For this reason, the results of the analysis have been kept brief. The most important problems for the local inhabitants is related to health issues. While the images express disappointment connected to the landscape, to the tourist sector increases and to democracy being overridden, the grassroots section of the web speaks global of political disappointment and health. The focal point is constant with Taranto and Lee. The word disease, the word tumors, often appear in the clouds. Another very interesting aspect is the important presence of the hashtag we are still in time, which underlines the non-resigned attitude and is still marked by the continuation of online activism. This study pursued the objective of investigating the relationships between digital activism, public space, and narratives of the territory. The descent towards the top the TAP is expressed in the convergence between different profiles of digital activists, who uses new technologies in order to support the organization of offline actions and even if inserted in a global ideological network, are deeply rooted in the territory. They talk about the subject 69 Facebook profiles, 203 Twitter profiles, and 17 YouTube profiles, identifiable to the same types of activists and online activism, the known tabs and citizens opposed to tap and not directly associated with protest movements are active in assessing the environmental, social and financial consequences of this enormous project. The offline strategy is more unified since the protest consists of a new coordinated no-tap associations. Disappointment is much more fragmented on the web. 
By inserting the analysis of online discourses in a theoretical framework of the geography of social movement, it emerged that in the case study analyzed, the routing with the real territory is evident. Although the strategies of protests and or participation are different, and therefore with different types of shares, both online and offline. In all cases, therefore, the informational and communicative links associated with social media create a contemporary existential speciality that is entwined with the lives of users, consumers, designing new relational geographies that allow social movements to expand and create new connections. A virtual speciality, however, that is reflected on the web is the fragmentation of movement in the real dimension in which different souls emerge. But also, at the same time, the ability to anchor territorial, territorially in different contexts. The virtual multiplication of different files of activists reflects, on the one hand, the transversality of codes that intercepts issues of a more universal, universal nature, but on the other, the randomness of the web and the risk of its activism, alteration of lives without real involvement, that undermine contemporary social movements. After the mobilization of the, on the web, the online claims were followed by street actions. Non-violent but organized first according to the flash mob strategies, then according to the more canonical ones of a street demonstration. To draw some conclusion, in recent years social movements have used the space of the internet to create engagement, communicate, organize and share the reasons for progress. Digital communication is increasingly affecting social, economic, cultural and territorial system. Urban spaces as a preferred stage of protestation must now be understood also by virtue of the symbolic implications that each practice of reappropriation of space tracks with it. These reappropriation practices are fortified by science and collective action and therefore bring to light one of the qualities of territory and in particular of public spaces being a social construct the result of the interaction of participants who use places in an articulated way on the basis of shared and conflicting interests and identities whether for or against the cause in constant transformation. The practices of digital activism are expressed in the modern several places and face the seniority of the landscape, of the cultures that raise in it of values through the sharing of the common cause in digital media and in the territorial media. The process of the territorial identity in its development draws growth and reinforcement from the narrative moments that originate on the web during the engagement phase in the territory during the event and time finally back online to share and communicate the protest. This story can add to the configuration of identity and territory and nevertheless contributes to its specific character like characterization. Every human being is a narrative of self and every human being draws inspiration for the codification of his own experience from that narrative. The narrating subjects in the Photographers, painters, investors um, uh, contribute more or less consciously to the process of identity formation. With their actions and narratives, they provide data for the interpretation of the territories and the feelings that they evoke. The narratives are, or would like to be, the evocative moment of shared experiences that refers to an emotional geography practice of experiences that help to trace a part of the individual life path and provide an image to an, to an inner landscape. This is on the more true when the narrative focus shifts to 
the identities of the young activists, protagonists of uh, the first case study. Striking is a perfect medium for narrating the value of cultural and political link between the human being in the world and the places. It becomes a preferred source from which to extrapolate the key to grasping the territory and produces scientific knowledge and legend story and project. The analysis of the discourses and visual elements is useful precisely for this purpose to try to understand the deep and complex meanings that science and images transfer in social and political conflicts and to investigate the narrative rooted in the territory that they are able to generate. This narrative will be fertile humus for the consolidation of collective identities closely intertwined with the territory understood in a twofold sense that for which they fight and that in which they fight. So thank you for your attention. You're a master. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for the interesting. So, um, I mean, people can um, put in their comments on the Q and A on or in the chat on on Zoom, or we can just ask uh, questions in the room. So, I don't know if, if people have got any immediate uh, observations that they want to make here, Mark. Yeah, you uh, should try and go over the world again. Yeah, try it again. I can't do that, uh, so it's good, 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 good effort to piece it here, but I'm learning. Sorry? I'm learning. Yeah, I'm learning. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, you know what I did, step up again, and that's... Okay, I'll I, I, I try, try, try later. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you very much. Um, just a couple of observations, really some uh, questions in there. Uh, really fascinating stuff to look at the nexus between Social movements and cyber spaces and actual public uh, spaces. Um, so, I suppose the first thing is the platforms that you're analyzing because uh, Google is a particular kind of platform, Facebook, TikTok, and all these other mm -hmm. things. So, um, what is the, uh, the relationship between mobilization and the kind of social groups you are assessing? And the nature of media that they are using in cyberspace to communicate and share the information. Does that mediation vary depending on the nature and functionality of the platform? I think that's another question to follow up on that. And that is, um, is there any evidence that the nature of Complex changes. Uh, you did mention that in flash mobs, for example, yeah. in a new phenomenon. In new, but the, the relationship between cyberspace and real space, street, street protests, um, uh, is there any sense that the efficacy of protests is enhanced through technological advantage to uh, the ability to make social change? Is it actually scaled up because the process is more effective you know, it's a technology? It's more than that. Yeah, it's really uh, quite good at uh, funding platforms and I think we're going to the step to which uh, this provides the advantage of more teeth and more potency and uh, more strength to the protest movements that we can put themselves as an Okay. okay, so uh, about the platform, surely they are useful, and this is maybe this answer is um, comprehend all the two questions. Because platforms are very useful and very important for the engagement, but in sometimes it's kind of engagement, not really. Uh, it's like selectivism, this activity that captures the attention but just likes and not to have a real engagement, a real involvement in the growth. So I think that platforms are useful but 
some platforms like Tom or two generalist platform um, can just uh, capture the attention of this kind of um, activists. So the this activism more precisely. Um, this is why I thought about the engaged skeptics because a lot of the youngest people are engaged but just for one cause, just one time, just to go out, uh, not all of them. But the um, people that are uh, engaged by this kind of there are other channels, web channels, cyberspaces where the engagement uh, is instead very useful. Um, it's able to capture the attention of a wider public that is more involved in the course. And maybe I answer to your second question also? Okay. Yeah, I want to Thanks for the other question. It's the generality of Google Maps as a specific platform. Do you think it also like this question and technology would be of course affecting like, because a lot of projects you got me do you mind these things? Do you think it's stopping on fast deal with it something that doesn't have a problem with it? Uh we have access to you know access to <laughs> technology or in some regards I also wonder um technology does or whether protesters suggest in your ways and I generally is when the pieces are coming here, the short term, whatever it is, uh, is coming here. Um, but also, the previous authorities, particularly the role spying department, or role surveillance, because you think about scrutinizing these in some ways as trade tactics, uh, also, so um, maybe an advantage, not a disadvantage to. Yeah, this is uh, it's a bit difficult to give an answer to this question <laughs> because uh, we have to consider some facts. The youth social movements are not really independent because a lot of them, Friday for Future, for example, is political movement and it stands from the institutional powers and politics so it's not independent so it is very structured we have other um, points on which we could reflect that movements social movements are not spread out everywhere we have social engagement just in democratic nations in graphic places, so it was so at the map where social movements express themselves. We see a map without a lot of countries that are not democratic. Also, because of this kind of social movements, the young social movements need a high tech competition, competency skills. Um, we have another problem which is that right. So, who can't use technologies can't be engaged. So, we have a lot of uh, reflections in that because I, I think that what it seems to us very free and independent, it's not like this. And we have to study a lot this kind of platform and the politics behind these movements to understand which are the dynamics of the creation of the movements. Yeah, sorry. How do you wish to discuss? Oh, okay. No, I mean, um, actually, what you just said leads into my question. That is, it just jumps out at me in your photographs that all the protesters are white. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's linked with, with what I saw yeah. right now. Because non democratic and with high digital divide, uh, all of these persons are not involved in process. Well, I think it's a lot more complex than that. Yeah. Um, and I, I've just been reading on the involvement the other climate change. And uh, he claims not only is it sort of not 
recognized um, that the, the most of welfare works under climate change are black and brown people um, throughout the world. Um, that's the simple part. The more difficult and I think um, important point is that climate change activists actually rewhiten the struggle and in so doing re racialize the um, use the word democratic, I would say the democratic order, uh, re re racialize the um, context, the concepts, the language of racialization um, in ways that actually impact against their own interests. I, I, I don't understand the question, so... Uh, well, what do you think? Uh, about um, okay. black, black presence in the um, No. no. Much um, more, it, it, yes, I'm sorry, it's much more complex than about whether black persons, black and brown persons yeah. are in movements or um, that um, climate change affects black and brown persons yeah. most profoundly. Yeah. The difficult part is that social movements actually reinforce the racialization of yeah. the world yeah. order. I totally agree with this. Um, I, I didn't study this part of the argument because I studied the Italian case as global climate strike, and um, when you see that photographs, is because they were the photos that I found in the work. But I'm sure that this um, improved the nationalization because we had some urban absence protests. And Italy is also the destination of yeah. thousands of uh, climate migrants and refugees. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it, it's like that, but I, I don't have anything from this, so I totally agree, but I can't provide you some data to talk about this phenomenon. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's more like my research is because I'm not finding from this into the mass or something that came to my mind. Uh, maybe you want to check the work of Marie Piani, which is an extensive work on social movements. He used to work in Glasgow and he. That's good to know. That's good to know. And he was actually working a lot on networks. And on like spatial contextual differences among different kinds of short social movements, like the family like an industrial city like Glasgow or another kind of city in Italy, it's an extensive one, so you can find this some case that might work. And also structural difference among the structure of the network developed for the social movement itself. So that's very sociological, but I might give you like an idea of how to analyze in cyberspace. Yeah. Um, also, I think that political scientists, they also analyze the engagement between people, young people, yeah. interest, you know, like disengagement, or the yeah. political disengagement, engagement, so, and they work very much quantitatively. So maybe you want to connect your own design. Thank you very much. Actually, I had laid on that, but I couldn't show anything. So I focused today on scientific analysis, visual analysis, but I have something about that. And something that is more like connected to my geographic experience. Yes, yeah, yeah, you can share about, that. Something <laughs> about the walking. Yeah. And so it reminds me like one March, uh -huh. you know, for yeah. uh, on purpose. And the body, the experience of being involved in a marriage, the emotional, symbolic experience, and that a lot of different levels of analysis connected. But of course, that would mean I would really love to see what's like the geographic data. So you do that for anybody who you're doing the work. 
and just connect it to the results. It's so interesting to see a cyberspace. I don't know, maybe a large space, but maybe an involvement that be about real. Yeah, I think that that's, that's one of the reasons I don't want. I think that the holistic way is not yet useful because what um, Athens Online has a lot of reflections of light, so we don't have more this uh, dualistic way to understand spaces. We have just one space, I think, today. And this would be very interesting. We could share our data and produce something together that. And to compare and contrast, yeah, and just to reach this question. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean, I'll, I'll ask a question as well. I'll we'll have a few questions, but and I want to ask about your about the data. Though I wasn't sure that I was quite getting what you've done. So on the on the global minor um, uh, kind of Italy strike data, you said you have thirty sources of data. But on your on your sentiment analysis, you only have about four hundred comments. You were doing your sentiment analysis on the sentiment analysis on climate strike. Yeah. Okay. So I think you said I think I think you said it was done on four hundred comments. Right? Yeah. Okay. So so for me, like that seems quite a narrow set of data. Mm. You know, you've got thirty different sources. You said. Yeah. Which might be. I don't know. Is that is that platforms? Like yeah, Twitter? platforms. Yes. Uh, generally, oh, okay. social media. This kind of sources. Right. right. So to me, like the data is really thin. Yeah. You've got thirty platforms. Yeah. Four hundred comments. So yeah. whatever that is, with you know, twenty thirty comments per platform. Mm -hmm. If you've got a million people taking part in strikes. Yeah. Because right. I choose just the comments that were politicized. But why would you do that in an analysis of political social movement? Because I want to have the sentiment of people without the political implications. Because in social movement, the social movement is all about politics. Why would you remove yes, politics? They are engaged by politics. I'm talking about the class strike, the class yeah. strike, the strike for the future, for example, mostly. Is Biggest movement. Yeah. And they had some institutional changes where they um, comment the event. But if they, if I want to, to understand which is the real sentiment, I don't want to see what is organized in the channels. I want to understand the sentiment. Yeah, that makes no sense to me because people are political. You basically say, I want to study people who are not political. But most people are political, right? They vote for political parties, yeah. they take part in a social movement. The idea you take part in a social movement and not be political yeah. doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Like, I mean, I think you have to just accept it. would be like saying, I want to study women in the home without involving any feminists. Like it would make no sense, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so your your data your, your data set is really thin. Yeah. It's, it's really narrow. Mm -hmm. Four hundred comments of the thirty platforms. Yeah. Whereas whereas most of these, you know, like most sentiment analyses would tend to involve tens of thousands of. No, when you enter your thing, like you do on your graph, get a graph with a track of white things on it. Okay. Yeah, but like there's only 400 things on there. 400, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Um, mm. It's really, yeah, yeah. it's really wide. Like, yeah. It's like a subset of a subset of a subset of a subset. Like it's. Yeah. I, I think you need to drop maybe think if you're, if you're going to do this kind of sentiment analysis, I mean, you would normally do it on tens of thousands of yeah. items, not a really small one. I mean, you could sort of categorize it off, mm -hmm. you 
you know, these are people who are coming from the left or from the right or from this political party or from this or whatever. But they end up points of comparison to be able to see, you know, these, these kinds of people say these kinds of things, these kinds of people say these kinds of things, and you then you don't have more disaggregated, more kind of wider set of things. I just wasn't quite sure, and you also you 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 the way that you catch the data is also very narrow. You know, you said global and climate and strike and this link. Yeah. Whereas in most sentiment analysis, you would stick in, you would point in a whole variety of terms and phrases and conjunctions between them. Yeah. You know, the, the, so you'd get a broader, you know, why not use hashtags? Why not study, study conversations going through threads? You know, so people answering and replying to each other. Why not? Why not look at how the data is being shared or circulated? So, you know, which ones of these comments became viral, and which ones of these comments went nowhere? You know, like there's a difference between a comment that's just a statement and a comment that lots of people like or lots of people share. Yeah. So, I just wonder whether you, you might, my view would be, you might maybe need to think a bit about one, why do the data, and then two, what you. You know what, what you do with the, with the data in terms of, um, you know, like looking at what might be meaningful. Yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 In the other analysis, I uh, used a lot of comments for. Yeah. But in this case, I did this kind of choose to really. Yeah. Um, I I was involved in the. Um, I would like to understand which were the real workers, the real sentiment in this course, but maybe the, the results were very narrow. Yeah, I, I don't think you can dismiss people's political worries that is not their real concerns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we can get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't have a point as well as well as similar to the years around. If I get a little bit of weight, there's a separation going on here. You've got people tweeting online, and you've got people on the street, mm -hmm. whereas they're actually interconnected activities. In the sense of people are live tweeting that, they're live Facebooking yeah. it, they're live streaming it, they're active, you know, there's a, they're doing the two things simultaneously. Yeah. And what you really want to be able to do is actually talk to the people that you interview them, or, you know, at the minute you're analyzing their social media without out of context, really. Yeah. And what would be useful is if you could kind of see. Yes. Join the conference. It's to join them up, but also to see the only way you can really see the extent to which you know the comments were reshaping, you know, like this kind of iterative, interconnected loop between what you're doing online and what you're doing offline and how the two feed in and relate to each other. Yeah. You can only get at that by, you know, actually going and talking to people who are doing it yeah. to see. Yeah, maybe it's an interviews. Yeah, I think so. Primarily the collection. Yeah, but, but when you do it in conjunction where you're looking at the social media comments and their interactions and yeah. so on, and so you've got. Corporation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can start to get a conversation about yeah. how they kind of link up with each other. Yeah, I think that would be. Okay. Well, my danger with this is it's like the it's like the traditional kind of debate that goes on between a close reading and a distant reading. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is this is more sort of a distant reading yeah. as opposed to a kind of close, grounded, where you're actually talking to the authors of, as well as just yeah. reading it, you know, in a, in a in a kind of sentiment way. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah. so, so, you know, I'm just going to give you a good check. Okay.
and a jump in because I was also thinking about that lesson. Of course, it's mindset in the, in the methods that I usually use. Uh, like, if you could actually get in real, like, get to know somebody like a gatekeeper, somebody that like is also from, from, from the social media or the platforms you are analyzing, somebody that is influential, you can understand maybe it's more influential and get to know these people for real. And it would be very interesting also to understand it's a little bit the thing about the traditional Asian media of means of communication. You know, maybe they're using WhatsApp, they're using uh, Telegram, Telegram, Telegram. I have your hands also like no mainstream, no, no, no Facebook, no, no Facebook, no yeah. Facebook, whatever. Also to understand different things, different medium and, and then the impact on like in, yeah. in, in the real in the real movement, in the real actions. Yeah. I mean if you were to take uh, like if you were to take this study and you transfer it somewhere else, like you don't take it to Hong Kong where you look to the umbrella movements. Like everything is encrypted, right? Everything is on exactly. Telegram, everything is on whatever. But it's definitely it's, they, yeah. they, 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 I mean, we don't know. We don't know maybe Chinese, but they are doing their liberty. I don't believe, you know, that because the country is non democratic, they are not just doing it. Yeah. So it's maybe very productive to mobilize technology, training on that. Well, the Hong Kong people are really interested because they're telling you directly what their tax and strategies are. Like, so they produce handbooks that they've circulated into Indonesia and into India and into all the places, but basically telling you how you have a social media protest in a country where your media will be spied on. Yeah, which is basically you, you take everything off the phone, right? You, you, have, you just have the encrypted stuff on the phone, you don't have any contacts on the phone, you don't. You, you basically uh, make the make the you know take anything that you can track and trace off the phone off. You turn it all down. You don't put address books on. You don't put. That's a bigger issue, obviously, because I can't even. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm projecting myself thinking this way because I don't know. Maybe I can do it. Yes, I'm talking about you. No, it's. There's so much more influence. Now, I think yeah. this might tell us is us in the end, they take more reports than anything else. So, uh, <laughs> well, you don't have to think and spy. No, it's just a thing for sure. But I, I'm really not convinced that the world is white in the democratic countries and non democratic countries. Mm-hmm. And the work you're talking about exists in only the non democratic ones. Oh, you know, there exist, I mean, they definitely exist in the West. Yeah, I'm good at the as well. It's a lot of work done. The is a high Yeah. 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 That's not it. Some of the things I think is fascinating about what they're doing. I don't think the logical points um, talk about the more ecological point of view. Um, okay, just seem to try to get the sentiment, use the word sentiment, the sentiment. Yeah. Uh, Stated that, of course, uh, Stalin is said to be a democratizer and everybody, you know, the public sphere, you know, you know, the conclusion he thought would be more uh, hijacked and at least in the public sphere, like the media, the football world, and so on. That's what we're going to get right here. Sentiment rather than a part of it. What is very good in what it's sentiment? What you mean by is it the center of gravity of public opinion? Is it the alpha of public opinion? Um, do you know the methodology then defense can come from search for or chase for sentiment? And that is the best way to see what sentiment and what you think sentiment means and what kind of concept of sentiment. So, I mean, yeah, what is the concept? This is a methodology that methodology that was uh, established by Hank New in 2008 and it is called so it's not my uh, way to call it. Uh, they talk about sentiment analysis because they linked the results with the opinion, with the 
stimulus. In fact, in the first phase of the sentiment analysis, the only thing they could do was to understand um, if people were happy or not about something. And to improve it, they add the emoticons in, um, for example, in Facebook, we have a lot of choose and a heart, sadness, happy. Uh, with Instagram, we don't have all of this. Um, we can put a heart, a like, and so on. They use all these shades just to improve this kind of analysis that at first was used for political. Um, elections to understand who was the preferred candidate in the American elections at first. Then spread out with a lot of topics and we try to use it in other fields like geography. It's try, I don't know if it's effective. I like to try because I think that um, if we think about territory in the um, mediatic sense, territory, territory as a medium, as a place where a lot of relations, words, actions, uh, manifests, architectural uh, buildings and so on uh, are related. So in this sense, I try to use the, uh, the meanings to understand the meanings of territory, so on center of crisis, each of understand which are the sentiments, the opinions about something in, in places. Uh, I mean, there's something uh, very important uh, in Bolivia. Yeah. As you say, obviously, I don't think it was some possession means the under regular sentiments of the yeah. bell shaped part of uh, the too often the uh, social media has extremely difficult to organize the same thing with the most activists that we have to say it's not something we must have to do. Actually, we also try to understand that you probably have claims to a long part of it, but it doesn't require an idea of public activism or not about an idea of public investment. Yeah. Yeah. The distribution of which is the idea of sentiment analysis is something that is problematic. Yeah. So, do you think that that very really good underlying constructs that are related to the master world sentiment mm -hmm. um, and then we began to present the temporary methodology and mm -hmm. uh, some responses to those questions? Yes, yes, I think that as a methodology, Kant is full standing. It needs a lot of other methodologies to be improved and to improve the results. I try to use the visual methodology, but maybe a lot of other methodologies to collect primary data, we introduce surveys and so on to be useful to improve the results. I don't understand which of the narratives they are spread out in the territory. So my my problem, I guess, is that sent the sentiment analysis is not really telling you anything about narratives. It's not really telling you anything about narratives. You know, like narratives are you know passages of text that constructs a kind of a rhetorical argument and whatever. Whereas a like, tweet is a hundred and forty character, very short, whatever, and and then the sentiment being extracted out of it is is quite mechanical and reduction. And you, you know, you want to read a body of tweets in context for the sentiment analysis of the original tweets to really get a sense of the meaning and so on what's going on. You know, it's a very thin narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, so and so, because you can, as I saw before, you can use the words like hyperlink so you and click on each single word and read every comment in which that word is used. Yeah. And so you can understand in which sense it's used, um, which are the words with which is uh, linked 
for example, in the correlation of the most recurring topics that we saw before. And also, there is a theoretical framework that talks about narratives not only in the um, sense of narrations, but some authors talk about, talk about sentiment, um, narratives as images, for example, as videos, for them everything is narratives. So in this sense, you could teach something between these analysis. Narratives are the effects and something for each of effects. This is not the case. This is not useful. So anybody else would you get any questions online? So this uh maybe this question would be a bit to close. Well thanks very much for um, Thank you. Uh, talk. I'm assuming there's quite a bit of discussion and questions. Thank um, you. Uh, if you manage to follow Knox yeah. tone me down that's what you like so <laughs> then you did this done well. And that's the last few. Um, yes, yeah, so just thank you again. Thank you.